Hi, everybody. Welcome to another restart session. Um, Eastland Fairfield Current Technical Schools are hosting these restart sessions um, and posting them in the hopes of providing some answers and clarity on a number of issues that we know that parents, families, and students have concerns about or questions about as everybody's trying to figure out what's um, going on in this very challenging time. And as we've said time and time again, um, I'm certain that um, no school district wants to be in a position to keep schools from being in the building, but the health and safety of everybody certainly is the top priority. And that's really um, what comes down to making these types of decisions. In this session, we're going to be joined by the superintendent, Bonnie Hopkins, um, who has been um, dealing with these issues, listening to the health experts, sitting in on meetings with other superintendents and all kinds of people, um, getting all types of feedback. So we're going to kind of um, listen to her and have her answer some questions today. So welcome um, to Bonnie Hopkins, who's the superintendent. Thank you, Shane. Look forward to our conversation. And as always, if you have questions or concern, concerns, uh, we invite you to contact the school and we'll try to get those things taken care of for you. Um, so our restart plan, Shane, we've been working on for uh, the past several weeks. We talked to, as you mentioned, our state and community leaders, health experts, um, other administrators, uh, Fairfield County superintendents, our Central Ohio superintendent group, our associate school partners, and those conversations have, have been going for weeks and um, continue, will continue, so. Absolutely, so um, as, the, as you were getting ready to make this announcement towards Plan C, um, mm -hmm. can you kind of talk a little bit about what went into that to formulate your um, restart plan and obviously you had originally decided to be plan b had to make the decision to go to plan c can you just provide some insights so people understand what goes into that sure sure well our career tech planning district covers multiple counties there are actually six three more significant size counties and all of them at the time had been seeing higher rates uh, and trends with covid and so we received strong recommendations um, from all of those departments um, and our largest county health department recommended a remote only start. And so obviously we made the decision last week when we did because we were just within two weeks of the start of school. And I, I felt like I have to say something to families so they know something about the beginning. And then we have 16 associate schools in the CTPD and we generally try to be in some alignment with them. And at that time, the majority of them were remote or undecided. So we were just trying to give an answer and then continue to work on this um, as we go forward, so. Right, and it's a tough decision. And it hmm. certainly has to be even, um, well, I shouldn't say even more tough when you're a career technical district, it's tough everywhere, but career tech is hands-on, right? So, right. you know, you can't, be hands-on if you're not in the building and that's certainly one of the biggest questions and concerns is over how can career tech be accomplished effectively online okay well first of all my words are that we want to be in the labs as soon as possible so um, as soon as we know we believe we can do that safely we'll be there so we're hoping it's a briefer period and again uh, i didn't make any commitment to a month, a quarter, a semester, and there were no choices around um, having to select that. So our goal is to be back as soon as uh, we can make sure we can do it safely. Um, I think also that our, our, our lab instructors are, are pros. They're some of the best in the business. Um, I have confidence that they will work to assure that the students are getting that best technical training and then when we do get back, um, our goal is to extend the time in their labs so that we can recover any of that hands-on time that was lost while we were in either a remote or, or even the hybrid plan. So, Right, and I think that that's an important thing that you mentioned. Um, you know, I know some districts have said, well, we're going to be all online for the first semester or maybe even the first half of the year, but this is really going to be a day-by-day -day decision for you guys, correct? 
Yeah, the, the, the thing that I'll want to do is give some notice to families, uh, just to know Shane. And then obviously with our homeschools who provide transportation for our students so that they can be prepared to deliver those students, um, whatever that, you know, as soon as that date starts. So, um, but yes, I'll be monitoring constantly to see when we can um, get to that point. Sure, so sticking on that, that idea of career tech, um, are there specific steps that you guys are going to take to assure that these students have an exceptional career tech experience? Yes, well, um, that's, that's our mission, Shane, that their outcomes uh, should be exceptional always, no matter what the delivery model. So the order of things, the way we do things may look different this time, but, but certainly we will get to that. Um, we'll continue to use our business partners for um, any available demonstrations, interview guidance, based learning experiences that they can have. Uh, we've provided professional development for um, our teachers over the summer. We developed an internal professional development group uh, that included lab instructors so they can, can uh, experience having to do that differently than hands-on only. Um, our career tech uh, organizations, ACT and others, have come up with professional development. We've offered through our ESCs some more professional development for that online work. And um, so again, we want them back as soon as we can. Um, if there needs some supports in the meantime, we'll try to have some small groups in as we're able uh, to support their particular students' learning needs and uh, to get to that lab practice time uh, as quickly as we can. So, we, we don't want them to end up at a different place than we wanted to, regardless of the, of the delivery model. And then if time needs to be flexible later or a different model completely to school so that we can recover what they feel that they missed, we'll pursue that too. That's our commitment to that outcome, yeah. Yeah, and I know just having worked in career technical schools for years, career tech is a very flexible space. You guys are very adept at changing on the fly because yeah. you have to with industry standards. So this should be um, not easy for you guys to do, but you guys certainly are more prepared to be yeah. able to respond. I think so. Yeah, I, I believe so. So um, obviously parents will want to know, families will want to know what is going to go into a decision to get the district back to, I'm gonna say plan B because that's the likely reality of sure. going to a hybrid model. What, what, it is. what goes into that? Well, we're all learning as we go because none of us have, have ever been through this before. And, and I can only say that the decision to bring students back, whatever way, is, is a huge weight. And I think we all know that um, a lot of people have had uh, COVID and have responded well and are fine. And I think um, there are a lot who have had COVID and not responded well. And I think it's always trying to weigh the risk, um, how to balance the risk, I guess is a better way to say that. But certainly I'm gonna err on the side of health first. Uh, like I said, there's other things we can do to work with time and situations later to to recover things but so first health is always going to be there so i will be looking at the statistics and the recommendations from those uh, health departments um, uh, our associate school we will try to be aligned with them so there are not inconsistencies that really confuse people more uh, with the associate schools um, we'll be watching our teachers and our staff and we'll be monitoring shane how they do with the protocols because our safety will depend on when when we get back how do we continue to to respond to that and then i i think um regardless of um the format originally you know what is our absenteeism and um what kind of illnesses and and quarantines do we have going on even as we begin to go back to plan b so I think it's, it's just monitoring everybody's health, what's happening in the broader community. Uh, less out and about in the community, less cases means better chance going back safely. So those are all the figures and, and the folks we'll be talking to um, to get to that point. Great. 
So um, there's obviously a lot of logistics that go into any normal school year, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially when you're dealing with, in Eastland Fairfield's case, 16 different districts, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, transportation, meals, all that type of stuff. So if um, and when school does return in person in some form, um, mm-hmm. what will trans- how will transportation work? Well, transportation to the career centers um, is a function of our associate districts. So that's why we'll need them some notice to, to the plan change so that they can be prepared. And then specific questions can be routed to their associate district uh, for transportation. Um, as far as the meals, Shane, um, in Plan A and B, um, we will have food service on campus. Uh, we've arranged space so that we have alternatives to students needing to congregate in a cafeteria or, or space. Um, so we can redesign that or serve in labs or in classrooms. Um, during their weeks off or their remote learning times, we'll also have meals that, that they can take. And then if we're on full remote, we'll have a meal pickup schedule, much like we did in the spring. And I would just uh, encourage people to watch the website for the particular dates there. Absolutely. We always um, <clears throat> post those updates at eastlandfairfield.com when they're available. And just a back to school note, um, it's important for families to go and to the OneView portal if you haven't done that yet on the website. And, and um, there um, is a free and reduced lunch application that you need to um, complete if you need that. So just a little note there. So let's talk a little bit about safety um, because this is a public health issue. And so safety is tantamount. Um, what have you done over the summer to ensure a safe environment when students do come back? Okay. Well, we've purchased a lot of PPE, Shane, um, and additional cleaning equipment and product and supplies. Um, we've installed plexiglass in some labs in office areas. Um, we've rearranged classrooms. We've moved some things out of classrooms so we can create the appropriate um, distancing. Um, we've always followed an aggressive cleaning schedule, but we now have a plan for throughout the school day, um, periodic pieces of different cleaning protocols. Uh, we've purchased signage, we've put floor markings up for the reminders of protocols. And then we do ask staff and our students to help with this by, by wiping areas where you were um, when you leave a classroom. And then we'll also be uh, having plans to maintain um, assigned seatings so that if we ever have a situation that we can be very helpful and very clear with our health departments with regard to tracing if something should occur so that we, we will know where those students were exactly um, through the course of the day. So that's, that's kind of the summer activity here to, to get ready. Okay, and certainly the district has put forth some health and safety protocols um, mm-hmm. students, not just students, but staff as well. And, you know, there's a lot to those protocols. They can be viewed at eastfairfield.com. But what are some of the major points that you want to highlight with them? Yeah, I think the first most important thing is if you're ill or you have any symptoms or have a temperature, stay home. Uh, we, we will be monitoring temperatures um, for staff and students upon their entry, but if you're starting the day that way, just stay home. That's the safest thing for everybody. Um, we also will have a, basically a no visitor policy, Shane, unless it is necessary and by appointment. Uh, parents, we love you there, but uh, right now it's best we know and, and we can plan for that. Um, we'll be honoring the governor's travel advisory and those quarantine requirements and the requirements for anyone or any other situation uh, as defined by the health department. Um, We will maintain social distancing. We do have a mask requirement for all staff and students. And we encourage the hand washing and the other personal hygiene with sneezing, coughing, and whatever. And then by all means, encourage people to work with their medical professional on anything that's happening health-wise. And, and then we, we just have to be bold enough to say too that um, everybody's health depends on each other. And so we, 
if you if folks don't follow the protocols, then we'll have to seek some disciplinary situations or request people to leave. It's the only way I can make sure that we try to protect each other correctly. It's, it's not meant to be ugly. It's just, uh, if we have a protocol and we don't do it, then we really didn't have one. And then everybody is more at risk for that. So that's, that's the kind of highlights of it. Absolutely. So um, again, people should familiarize themselves with those health and safety safety protocols and those are available on the website. I know they also were mailed out to families. Um, but if people want to view those, they can go to the website. What else do you want to cover today? Anything else that you can think of that we didn't talk about that you think is important for um, your families and communities to know? Um, we want to do uh, exceptional work with our students. Um, they're at the heart of what we do. Um, we haven't enjoyed this period of being away from them or them out of the labs, um, but our promise is um, to make them whole with what they signed up here to do and to um, hang in there with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in person and, and watching your skill development and your future growth. That's, that's why we're here. Absolutely. They should remember why they signed up because that's still yeah, possible. Don't lose that. Yes. It's, it's still possible. It's doable. Yeah. We'll get there. So one, one of the things before we close, you know, I know that in the decision-making process, um, you know, somebody who, ha who, you know, bears the weight of all the responsibility of the discipline. <laughs> there. You know, I want to make sure people understand that, that um, this is a situation that, did you ever think you would face a situation <laughs> no. as complicated? No, I, I have heard, like I said, we've been in constant conversation with, as superintendents, and I think none of us uh, could ever have imagined uh, this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with and, and, and trying to hold education and health in hand all at one swoop, and it's, it's, it's pretty demanding. But, Absolutely. Uh, uh, our, our, our families' lives, our students' lives need to be better because we've been in it. And so that's what we're going to be shooting for. So, Absolutely. And it's important to understand that, that information changes daily and decisions oh, yes. might adjust daily. I think that's important to know because, you know, we're going to, we're having this conversation today on a Tuesday. This is going to be posted tomorrow morning. By tomorrow morning, some of the things Absolutely. you said might be out of date. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. A week ago, remote only looked like the only thing for most people. Yeah. Now it's shifted again a little. And I, I think um, some of our associate schools were shifting the start dates to try to, to give time to figure it out. And that's why some remained undecided at the time. But since we had an early start date, it, we had to do something. And at the time, that was the best judgment that, that we could make. Might we feel differently about that tomorrow or by five today? Certainly, but uh, all with one goal in mind, get back to school, get students here to do what they signed up to do. So. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Shane. Yeah, to Bonnie Hopkins for being on. And again, if you have questions or concerns, certainly you can find contact information on the website and reach out at any time. So thanks again, Bonnie. Thank you, Shane.